Hello, welcome to Brit Inspires. This is Brittany, aka Brit Inspires, and uh, this is a channel that is all about inspiring you and giving you the tools that you need to be in your best and highest vibration and your best state that's possible. And um, so, all the content that we're going to dive into and learn about is going to be about inspiring you. In today's video, we're going to talk about really stepping into your inner higher self and understanding yourself. Now, self-understanding is the door to quietude. It is the power that you have. When you understand yourself, you begin to understand your vibration, your energy, the energy that surrounds you a lot better. The people around you, the experiences that you have, you just start to have a better understanding of what it looks like, like what it looks like for yourself as far as what you want to create. And when I went on my journey of self-discovery, it was very fascinating because you go through these phases where you feel like you're just hitting these high peaks and these high mountains and you're like oh my gosh i've cracked the code i figured it out i know exactly what it is that i want to do with my life and how i want to be and you just feel like you have all the answers and then you turn the corner and you're sitting in your room and you're like wait a minute hold up i have no clue i absolutely don't know anything i feel completely lost and these phases come often. You have your high moments and you have your low moments. You have your moments of enlightenment and you have your moments of complete confusion. Like what is what? And I want to talk to you guys about that today because I have gone through those phases. So when I started my journey to self-discovery, I was it was exciting. It was fun. I was learning so many new things about myself and I was really doing that inner work to transform myself. But I, my outer world started to get a little crazy and I didn't understand everything that was going on around me. I didn't understand why it was happening the way it was happening. I didn't understand a lot of stuff. And so in that space, after I had reached this peak of enlightenment, I felt like I went into a dark tunnel and everything started to get a little bit confusing and unclear. And I was looking for signs, I was looking for sinks, I was looking for some something to show me the way, I was praying, asking God to give me guidance, and I felt like, what the world, I'm not getting any answers. I, I feel disconnected from what I once was connected to. So I wanna talk to you guys about how to really stay, stay consistent in your journey, even in those tunnels, even in those moments of like lack of clarity or dis-ease in your body, your mind. Um, there's some principles that I like literally go by and I'm going to read them off to you guys because I don't know them by heart. I had to write them down on my computer. So I'm going to read them off to you guys and then, you, then we're going to talk about each one. So change yourself. The first one is change yourself rather than working to change others. The second one is to place the inner man in control of the outer. Um, and then the third, abandon false before seeking truth. Fourth, be loving and you will be loved. Fifth, attend the reason you felt hurt, not those who hurt you. And six, set inner integrity before good works. And seven, place thinking before speaking. And eighth, be a real person then before trying to be a social person. Um, and nine, understand self, then try to understand others. And then 10, destroy negative attitudes, not negative conditions. And 10, place small efforts before great determinations. And so these 10 points of self-understanding has been a guiding light for me as I go through the ups and downs in life, the ebbs and flows, the good, the bad, the unsure. Every season that I've experienced, I kind of been holding true to these standards and this has helped me a lot. So I wanna to talk to you guys about each one. I'm gonna give you my understanding of it, um, share some information on it, and just give you guys insight around each topic so you guys can be able to apply this to your own personal life. Um, the book that I like to refer to is The Cosmic the cosmic powers um i forgot the name of the book i always i always say the mystic powers of cosmic power something like that i always i always re refer the book but i forget what it is titled but i read it all the time 
Okay, so change yourself rather than working to change others. Now, we all have had these experiences where, say, there's people in our lives or around us. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> there's people around, around us that we love and care for. And we look at these people and we're judging, we're analyzing, we're looking at how they are. And as we're judging and analyzing and weighing these people around us, we're judging them. We're judging how they are towards us. We're judging how they react and how they are we're, we're constantly judging these people around us to see if they're really genuinely good for us and these different things but i encourage you and from my own trial and error i encourage you to work on yourself go within if you're noticing people around you behaving in a way that is offensive to you look within yourself look within yourself take a second to really look within yourself and do that deep dive in understanding why am i having this experience why has this experience happened to me what is going on within me that is surfacing this type of reaction from other people and it could be a plethora of things that are happening inside of us if we feel fear and anxiety or uh we were nervous about someone judging us a lot of times we're creating these different scenarios to happen in our wake life in our real life is because we're constantly focusing on the things we do not want to experience and then people they play out those scenarios so that's powerful because you have so much power within you that you're able to alter your reality you're able to shift your experiences with people so it starts within it's not something that you change on the outer. It's something you change from within. And then you start noticing people adjust and they'll start to be more more of what you're looking for in, in your interactions with others. Or they kind of, you know, decide, hey, you know, I'm going to fade out of this person's life. Whatever reasons, it's different things. Now, the second one, place the inner man in control of the outer man. So this one is... This one for me is kind of a juggle and a balance because my inner self, my inner being, um, sometimes is uh, <laughs> in in a, a little bit of conflict with my outer. Now, my outer being, this, you know, what you see right here, me as a, you know, person, how I dress, how I like to look, how I feel, how I am perceived by other people, what I say when I'm around other people, how I carry myself, how I act, my exterior the things people see that is not within the deep steps of my heart. Now, when you place your inner man in control of your outer man, I believe this is really, and I always go to the, the scriptures, it's the Holy Spirit, the spirit that resides within you, your soul being, your, high, your, your inner being. That comes first. That work on that inner self, going within, diving within and doing that work is what's going to illuminate the outer man that's going to illuminate the being that is the exterior that everyone sees because of the work that you do on the inner man so you place the control of that inner like that inner being you're controlling your inner internal mastering your internal so that your external is just on point so it starts within that's why reading books, that's why studying, that's why listening to good content, that's why talking to yourself in a positive manner, speaking life to yourself, encouraging yourself, saying affirmations, that all illuminates the outer man and it controls the outer man in a positive direction. And that's what you want to do on a daily basis. Abandon false before seeking truth. Now, this one was a huge one for me in my journey because I would learn so much information. I would just be learning, 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 all these new truths. But because I held so tightly to the false, it was really difficult for me to accept the truth. So when we're holding on for dear life to the false, we, we don't have any space to accept truth in our lives. We're, we're hard to it. Our hearts are hard to truth. So that's why like people can read the Bible. People can study ancient scriptures and ancient texts. And it just does not penetrate the soul of the man because they're so hard hardened. Because they're, clean, they're clenching to the false self. They're clenching to the, the false reality. The false illusions that have been presented to them since their youth that they believed in. Now, when you 
are an open-minded being when you open yourself to understand things that may be different from what you always believe some of your false your false belief systems your false identity of self like if you have this false identity that I'm supposed to be this way and I'm supposed to be that way, da 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 No, if you let all that go, free yourself of it, and start seeking that truth with an open mind, you may learn something of great value about yourself that can help you evolve and become even greater. So that's one that I had to really work on. It's really difficult. I still struggle with it, but it's something that I'm constantly teaching myself and, and reminding myself to let go of the false. <clears throat> and abandon it all together before I start seeking more truth. Be loving and you will be loved. I love this one because I am obsessed with love. I really love the word love. I really love the idea of abundance of love because I believe that that transcends multiple dimensions, multiple con states of consciousness. Love is truly um, a higher state of being. That's what I believe. Now, when you are a loving person, and not a perfect person, a loving person, when your heart is loving and you wish to do well unto others, and you wish to bless others, and you're praying and, and sending out blessings to others, and you're asking for that uh, love and grace, you know, to be surrounded by them, you are going to be loved. That energy is going to be reciprocated. Even if it's not from the specific source that you're giving that love to, if it's not the specific person that you bestow that love to, you're going to get that love back. That love is going to show up in another form, another way. It does not go, uh, it does not go unseen. So always be loving and you will be loved. I think that one's pretty good. Attend the reasons why you felt hurt, not those who hurt you. Now this one's hard because my whole life, when people hurt my feelings, I tend to always look at that person and I'm like, the person hurt my feelings, they hurt my feelings, that person hurt my feelings. But you have to detach yourself from that. Detach yourself from that. Because nobody can truly hurt you. No one can hurt you. You are the only one who has the power to hurt your, hurt your own feelings. And that's in your mind and how you perceive. So this kind of matches up with the change yourself rather than working to change other people because it, it's a reflection. Why do I feel hurt right now? Like what triggered inside me that made me feel sad or made me feel hurt by this person's words or actions or uh, sin against me? When you sit with yourself to understand what triggered it, you can then go to the root of the problem and you can start resolving from within. You can start doing the work from within. And when you really can resolve the hurt from within, you can really stop being hurt. Like it, it dissolves because it's like, okay, there's something in me that was triggered. What is that trigger? Okay, let me dive into understand what that is. And then you dive in and you do that, do that work and understand it. And the hurt, nobody can hurt you. No one has the power to. Because you start to realize that you're more powerful than the hurt that was put on you. So there's that one. Um, also, set inner integrity before good works. Now, inner integrity before good works. Like, what I, what I see when I hear this is that you're being your moral compass, the person that you desire to be, the work that you have been called to do, that is your inner integrity. And sometimes, like, sometimes, like, even though all things are good for, for men, like, you could do whatever you want, you can go wherever you want to, you know, you're free. Not all things are going to align with your inner integrity as far as, like, how you like to do things. Do things the way that you want to do them. Do good to others, but do not do it to the point of people pleasing, where you're going against your own integrity, you're going against your own being, you're grieving your spirit. You have to allow yourself to do good unto others within your integrity, doing right by others within your integrity, and continue to cultivate that and tweak it as you're learning and as you make mistakes and as you grow from those places, continue to get better. So there's that. Um, place thinking before speaking. Now this is a huge one. Before I do any videos, I, I really like to sit with myself and think about it. I really like to sit with myself and read and, and write and journal and reflect on what I'm learning and what it is that God's revealing to me in this season in my life before I speak. The same is true in my personal relationships. And this is something that I'm working on because I'm a very communicative person. But sometimes I talk too much. 
Sometimes I share too much. Sometimes I give too much information. And the thing is with thinking before speaking, you're taking the time to really understand if it's necessary for you to share certain information. Sometimes it's not necessary. Sometimes it's not necessary to tell everybody every detail about your business, your life, your your operation, what you're doing. Sometimes silence is the best thing because in silence you can manifest and create the life that you want. In silence you can manifest and focus on the things that you desire instead of telling everybody, "Hey, I want to do this. I want to go here. I want to this is what I'm into. This is da, da, da. and it's like so many different other energies are attaching themselves to that idea and it it just gets convoluted. So focus on speaking about things that are necessary. Don't just blurt out words because words are powerful so place thinking before thinking be intentional when you speak be a real person before being social so to me this be means being in your true self being your authentic self being able to be who you really are and not being like oh my gosh i gotta act a certain way i have to be a certain way be who you truly are before you go out and be social really align yourself i always say get in alignment before you do anything before you go outside and network before you go and hang out with people get in alignment make sure you're in alignment with your true being your highest self so that you're able to really illuminate your truth and speak your truth and be in your authenticity understand self and then try to understand others now understanding self is huge and this is what this whole conversation is all about you have to spend so much time alone really understanding who you are and what it is that you desire and understanding who how you are how you operate how you think why you think the way that you think your belief systems who are you know that to the depths of depths of depths of depths before you try to figure out everyone else around you like I like to I like to study people I do I, I meet people and I like to understand who they are where they come from I'm genuinely interested in people and even when I'm not around anyone I'm typically thinking about the people around my life like how are they well, what are they about but I learned that the most important person that I need to understand is Brittany myself I need to do that deep dive in myself so that I can be able to be understanding to the people outside of myself so that's a big one set Self-awareness before self-gratification. This is huge too. <laughs> so if you, I mean, we all love to eat good food, enjoy a good movie, really enjoy the pleasures of this beautiful life that we get to live. It's so beautiful. It's so amazing. And there's so many amazing pleasures that you can enjoy. But you want to be self-aware and you want to have understanding. Now, me, I love coffee. I drink coffee every single day, every single day. There's not a day that I, there's rarely, rarely a day that I don't. But I understand that my love for coffee is something where I enjoy, I enjoy the flavor. I enjoy uh, the different recipes. I enjoy the different blends of coffees. I love to taste and love, I love to just enjoy the, the cup. It's not an addiction for me because if it was something I need to quit, I would have I would have no problem quitting it. It would be no problem. And I think that's where self-awareness comes whenever you're enjoying or indulging in something that could have an addictive trait. Be self-aware about it. Know why you're going to that thing. Are you drinking coffee in the morning because you're so tired and irritable in the morning that you need a cup of coffee to like get you going? Maybe you should look at your diet and look at some ways to really be more self-aware about like why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Or like alcohol. I like to have a glass of wine at the end of the night. That's nice for me. I enjoy it. It's not something that I do every day or that I have to do, but I enjoy having a glass of wine. But am I having a glass of wine because I was stressed out today and I'm not feeling too good and I just want to drink a glass of wine because I'm irritated about something? I have to be self-aware about why I'm doing what I'm doing and understand the things that I'm partaking in so that I'm not becoming a slave to those things because that's what would happen. You become a slave to the things that you're running to for that self-gratification. All right, destroy negative attitudes, not negative conditions. And this one's a really good one because a lot of the times the conditions that we're in, I mean, you gotta be unmoved by the, the circumstances around you. You have to be unmoved by what's going on around you because everything that's happening on the external has a lot to do with what's happening on the internal, like what's happening within you, and your attitude towards life, your attitude towards people, your attitude towards the conditions, your financial conditions, wherever you're at in your life, all of that plays a huge part, a gigantic part in your 
experienced. So don't try to go and change the negative conditions with like, Gus, oh, I'm going to effort, effort myself out of this situation. Instead, change your thinking, change your thoughts, realign yourself to what it is you desire to experience and stop putting yourself in a place where you're experiencing things that you don't like. There's that. Um, place small efforts before grand determinations. Now this one is great for those of you that are working towards bigger goals or you're trying to create something like a small business or something in, you know, a side hustle, something to help yourself out. Those small little efforts every day are really, really, really important. I think we get ahead of ourselves with our big determinations and our big life goals that it just seems like, oh my gosh, I want to just accomplish this huge goal. But take each day in small bites. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So take each effort, work on it, work on each task, knock it out by the day. Really place that as a priority, those small little steps towards the bigger grandiose goals. So that's my 10 ways of really being able to become more self-understanding, self-aware, be able to really elevate your, in, your own spirit, your own energy into a space that you desire. Um, we're all creative beings and we all have so much potential within us. And as we become more self-aware and knowing who we are, we'll be able to really tap into this force, this life force energy that creates worlds, that creates beautiful experiences and abundance. And just know that you're an abundant being and it's your birthright right to be abundant. It's your birthright right to be happy and free. So step into that. Really don't feel bad for spending the time to get to know yourself. Don't sp feel bad for that. You need to sit with yourself. You need to sit in that quiet time and understand yourself, read books, learn what it is that you desire in this life and what you desire to create. So thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope that it was an enlightenment to you, an encouragement to you. I hope that you can take something away from this video and be inspired. And <laughs> again, thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, share, comment below your ideas, anything that you um, want to share. Also, I have links to my coffee packages for inspiration cups. If you want to purchase coffee, that's greatly appreciated. It supports my channel. It supports me um, as an entrepreneur. And then also follow me on Instagram at Brit Inspires and at ins Inspiration Cups. And yeah, you guys have a beautiful day. Your time is greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a beautiful day.